there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of pointing fingers, there's a lot of people worried that the MCU is dying. <laughs> oh, come on, guys, come on. Let's talk about why multiple dates were scrapped and why Marvel Studios delayed multiple films. I mean, it's right there in front of everybody. We've been talking about it for weeks. It's very apparent. So right now, what has happened with Marvel Studios is the same thing that's affecting everybody in the industry. And that is the combo, if you will, that's been delivered to the industry between the uh, problems with shooting in locations and post-production because of the pandemic, which has also been compounded upon and made even worse for a good reason by the strike and people wanting to go on strike and wanting better demands for the amount of work they put in and the amount of work and risk that they're taking to put their bodies on the line for no back end, right? All the actors are getting back ends, but the people whose films are on digital aren't, people in other parts of the entertainment industry aren't, and there's all sorts of things going on. Marvel Studios did what I would call is a preemptive strike, and it's not just Marvel Studios. It happened across multiple Disney films. They delayed them because post-production is taking longer, production is taking longer, safety measures, locations, locking them down, getting silicon chips, for the computer and the equipment is becoming harder. It's why you can't find video game systems out there, why they're going for ridiculous prices. Silicon prices are through the roof and we're running out of them on earth as it is ahead of schedule. So prices are going up. Disney and these companies like ILM, for example, have to fight for the latest and greatest of technology along with everybody else. It's just a giant problem. If they could fix that, they would. If money could fix it, they would try, but it can't, right? That's why Sony still, even though they have a hand in manufacturing some of these things for you know other competitors, yes, Sony actually manufactures chips that goes into competitors' equipment. They even can't do it themselves because, again, chip shortages. And this has all sort of compounded together at this time with the last year and a half, two years showing that you know, nothing is as safe and as steady as we believe it is. And now Disney's looking at it going, well, if we delay multiple films, if we only do two to three films a year, maybe that's the max. Maybe we go down to two. Who knows? We still got Disney. We can offset this and we can wait for everything to recover and hopefully it won't be a problem. And again, you know, this whole Hollywood thing isn't going away anytime soon. Yes, you could take care of one thing during a strike, but another thing is going to pop up and it's going to cause this ripple effect everywhere. Disney, in my opinion, did the smart thing. They announced substantial delays, which they know will hurt them at the upcoming investors call. Numbers will go down. Shares will fall. But they chose to do that for a smart reason because they know it's coming and it's better to have it out there before the investors call so the numbers fall and then they start recovering when the next phase of content starts coming out and they start rolling out making more money then to overpromise, and then every quarter have to drastically scale back what you're releasing and see it fall over a long term does that make sense you're better off taking a hit now and benefiting from it a year and a half to two years out than you are stretching that hit across two years remember they did this with captain marvel they said we're not taking a $50 million payday from Netflix to put it on there for a couple months. Instead, we're taking a $50 million guaranteed hit against Captain Marvel to put on Disney Plus because we believe it will pay off because subscribers will want to watch it. Guess what happened? They were right. They recovered so quick that that $50 million loss that impacted their bottom line during an investor's call was literally something that they paid off in a matter of days when Disney Plus launched with that movie on there. They made a smart preemptive strike on their own numbers. It's kind of genius if you really look at it. And they're not the only ones. Make no mistake, WB and DC did the same thing. Notice how multiple films from fandom had missing dates. Think about it. 